Hi friends. I pray this finds you doing well. I wanted to talk this week about uh, the full range of our emotions during what our globe, our world is going through. Um, everything from sorrow to fear to anger to uncertainty to anxiety. And then as I was thinking about that, it reminded me of the Psalms. And you know, the Psalms, when we hear about them, they're typically the Psalms that are praising God. And there are a lot of those. There are just as many Psalms that are crying out to God and that are pleading and petitioning with God. And unless we really go in and kind of study the Psalms, we may not know that because most podcasts and sermons um, are going to be solely focused on the ones that praise God. And I find it really interesting and really comforting that God provides the framework for lamenting to Him, to crying out, to pouring our heart out to Him when things are not going so well. I was walking in this meadow about two days ago when one of our children called and said they thought they were having an anxiety attack. So I immediately went into uh, the deep relaxation breathing. And then because I was in this incredible environment, I started talking about all creation sings of his glory, which is also the Psalms. I believe it's 64.5 perhaps, Psalm 64.5. And so I thought it was, again, I, I kept thinking of the Psalms. You know, I, I want to talk about the Psalms tonight because I want us to, to look at them as a model for the full range of our emotions with God. So I was pleased, you know, and delighted that my child called me um, in their time of distress. I can only imagine how God feels the same. So if you have this notion that maybe you can't be angry with God or that he would be disappointed in you if you were angry with him or that somehow you've got to clean up your emotions before you take them to him. I believe God has given us permission in the Psalms um, and in Lamentations and other places in his word. He's given us permission to be real with him and to be authentic with him, right? It's like if we have a friend and all we ever know is is the good in that friend's life. It's, that's a very shallow uh, surface level friendship. It's, it's knowing the hurts and the pains um, of another human that really allow us to be into a much deeper, deeper relationship. So think about that when you think about your relationship you know, with God and, and being real with Him with your pain. I love Psalm 13. I won't quote it exactly, but um, it basically goes like this. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Long enough, long enough I've carried this load of sorrow. It's long enough that I've carried this heart full of pain. I want to look life in the eye. I'm tired of falling down on my face. I'm turning myself to your loving arms, and now it's time to celebrate your rescue. So I will sing at the top of my lungs, and I will sing to the full of my voice that you have been good to me. And what I love about that is he spends about, the psalmist David, he, sends, he spends about four verses um, in Psalm 13 really crying out to God, uh, which is a Hebrew word, Raman. He's, he's crying out to God. And interestingly, that same word can be used also for shouts of joy or praise. But he's, he's lamenting to God. He's crying out to him. And he's, you know, just on the verge, right, of, of sounding very disrespectful when he says, how long? Like, hey, wake up. And in fact, there are Psalms where it actually says, wake from your slumber. Because I don't see you interacting with me or my circumstances right now. So I can only gather that that's how a lot of us feel right now. Hey, God, um, just wanted you to know global crisis going on, pandemic, 
uh, could really use your help. Uh, how long will you hide your face from us? So we think about that collectively and we can think about that individually as far as what's going on with us. What I do love about the Psalm Lamentations is they do eventually take a turn. You know, they might spend, you know, again, 80% and that and Psalm 13 is a, is a short Psalm. I think it's like six or eight verses. It's really short, but there are some that are really, really long and they'll spend the majority of the time, you know, just really giving it to God and just like, this is what's going on and my enemies are doing this and I haven't heard from you and where are you? And these are the things that you promised me. And then they go back to, but I will remember your goodness. I will remember how you have been good to me. And just this day right here is God being good to us. So feel permission to really grieve and, and to give that to God. And knowing that when you do that, it only makes the relationship with him so much more, that much more authentic and real. And then we turn again to those Psalms that do all of them are just about God's glory. And there's so many Psalms about how all of nature sings of his glory and creation just glorifies God. And again, I'm out here in it. And I know when you are, you feel it too. I mean, that's, there's been scientific research on this. We, we know this. I believe it is, um, I believe it's China that actually um, a year or so ago instituted um, like mass migrations, they would bus hundreds or thousands of people at a time from the urban cities out into nature because they had such a high suicide rate. And they found that just spending some time in the solace of nature just is such a healing salve, a hot balm for the soul. So that was my my thought and my meditation tonight was that as I lead us into the meditation, I'm going to switch the camera over so it's looking out. And I know I typically ask you to close your eyes during the meditation. You most most certainly welcome to do that, especially at the beginning when you're kind of getting that breath. But then you're welcome at any point to open your eyes. And we're going to see dogs running around, keeping a safe distance, of course. You'll see family groups who are quarantining together will be walking together, but you won't see any uh, groups beyond that gathering. But this is life, right? This is, uh, this is where we see humans and nature interact and we see God do his masterful work. So come into a comfortable position and where you are feeling supported by whatever surface you are on be it a chair or a sofa, maybe you are lying down. Just get into a comfortable position. Just take a few moments to adjust. Ah, just let out a sigh like I just did. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Ah, just sigh, just sigh and let it out, literally and figuratively. You may hear some wind in my headsets. I may turn around as a matter of fact because I might get less wind this way. We'll try that, yeah. So as you're making this adjustment, again, we are doing an evening practice. So we're moving from a state of high energy and high activity in our minds and in our bodies. And we are slowly coming down toward the end of the day as the sun is setting. And we're making our way into our time of rest. So as we do that, you'll continue that long, fluid, diaphragmatic breathing. In through your nose, expanding your lungs, allowing the rib cage to expand and then into the belly. You may have a hand in the center of your chest and a hand on your lower abdomen to actually feel this breath inside of you. So we're breathing with our eyes closed as it is comfortable for us. And we're making that transition 
allowing the body and the mind to come to a place of stillness and rest. Just take a few more minutes, a few more breaths, inhaling long and fluid and deep and exhaling just the same. Inhale long and fluid and deep and exhaling just the same. And as you have distractions around you, and we all will, this is just part of life. And in living life, we're going to have distractions and interruptions. That's okay. We just learn to accept them as they come, and then we move past them and just get right back on course. So don't view them as anything other than what they are, an opportunity to practice your focus. So we've made that transition in our breath and hopefully we're making it in our mind too. We're starting to feel more comfortable, more calm. I want us to think about in our mind's eye. I want us to visualize our body. And we're gonna do a body scan. And tonight what I want you to do is I want you to, as I mention a body part, I want you to contract the muscles of that body part on the inhalation and then on the exhalation, let them go. So for example, if we did our face together, I could say, inhale, really grimace your face, furrow your brow and then exhale, let it go and relax the brow, relax the jaw. So you're clenching the muscle on the inhalation and on the exhalation, you are releasing that muscle. So with that in mind, let's move now into our shoulders. So as you inhale, shrug the shoulders up close towards your ears, tight, 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 tight how most of us spend our day without recognizing it. And then as you exhale, release them. Ah, even doing some of the shoulder rolls that we practiced last week. Remembering if we move backward, we want to then move forward. Always trying to keep that balance in our meditation and in our yoga. Good. So moving down your arms now, see if you can clench your bicep. Clench your bicep, that's the large muscle in the upper part of the arm. So clenching your bicep, whether your arm is extended or the elbow is bent, it's your call. But clench it on the inhalation, and as you exhale, let it go. So the same with your forearm. Draw, bend your elbow and draw your wrist up towards your shoulder, working that forearm and a little bit of the bicep too, and now release it. Do some wrist rolls. You're doing both hands, even though I'm only doing one, you're doing two. Ah, and as we rotate the wrist clockwise, on our next breath cycle, we then want to rotate the wrist counterclockwise. Good. Moving down now into the torso. See if you can pull the belly in. Visualize your navel center, your belly button, and pull that back towards your spine. That's gonna engage your entire abdominal wall, and in so doing, the opposing muscle group of the back. So draw that navel center in, that's your inhalation, and as you exhale, let it go. You're inhaling and exhaling through your nose, if you'd like or inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth, your choice. Good, we're moving down into our lower body now. So I want you to draw your kneecaps up toward the hip bones. And when you do that, you're going to be engaging the muscles of the quads, upper part of the leg, and the opposing muscle group, the hamstrings. So inhale, draw those in. Visualize drawing your kneecaps up towards your hip as if you could. It's gonna engage that upper part of your leg. And as you exhale, release the kneecaps and release the muscles therein. Good. Moving into the calves now. So flex your toes, flex your feet, drawing your toes towards your body. 
Good, and as you exhale, point the toes. So inhale, flex the toes, and as you exhale, point the toes. Nice. And now do some ankle rolls like we did wrist rolls. Moving first in one direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. And then on your next breath cycle, the reverse. Excellent. Take a cleansing breath here, eyes still closed if it's comfortable for you. Long and fluid is your breath. And exhale. Inhale, long and fluid is the breath. And exhale, release. Nice. Good. I want you to visualize your mind now. In your mind's eye, with your eyes closed, visualize your head and your skull and the gray matter inside. Think about the thoughts that you've had just today, just today. And recognize any thoughts that you had of fear, anger, sorrow, uncertainty. And as you exhale, let them go. Not judging those thoughts. Not pretending like they're not valid or pretending like they don't exist. But actually acknowledging them for what they are. And exhaling, releasing them. Good. Let's take another cleansing breath here. Inhale, long and fluid. And exhale, release. Uh, and now we come to the heart, the heart of the matter. And here, with our eyes closed and our mind's eye, I want, we, I want us to envision just a laser focus, a light. A laser light shining right into the heart, the part of the heart that has housed our emotions just for today, just today's emotions. That will be enough. And I want us to search for those feelings of anger and fear and uncertainty and loss and despair. And I want to see if we, like the psalmist, on our exhalation, can not only let them out, but can lift them up towards God, giving them to Him, giving God all of us, not just the cleaned up version of us, not just the rose-colored glasses us, the real us, the us that He created, that He knows and loves the us that he desires to commune with. Let's give it a shot. Eyes closed if you're able. Inhaling, that laser light is just searching the heart for the emotions that you've had today. And when it lands on any of those that we spoke of or any that speak to you this evening, we identify it. And as we exhale, we not only let that emotion, say, of despair come out, but we lift it up. Yes, we lift it up. Let's do that again. Inhaling, searching the heart. Another Psalm 5110, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Let that be our mantra as we continue this exercise. Inhaling, visualizing the heart, identifying those emotions, exhaling, not only letting them out, but lifting them up. And I'm going to repeat that psalm while you're breathing and going through your exercise. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. 
Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. And again, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Friends, I hope that this has blessed you half as much as it has blessed me. I hope it's blessed you fully um, as much as it's blessed me, but even if it was just half, I know that you're feeling more relaxed now. And we talk about it a lot, but I think it bears repeating before I close this in prayer. Just knowing the exercises that we've done literally change your body on a cellular level. I think that's just really important to keep in mind that these are definitely endorphin releasing exercises. These are, these are feel good hormones that we're bringing forward, but there's so much more than that. There's so much more than that. When we breathe diaphragmatically, like we've been doing now for approximately 20 minutes, actually in just three breath cycles, which a breath cycle is an inhalation and an exhalation, but certainly as long as we have been, friends, you have actively taken part in lowering your resting heart rate. You have actively taken part in lowering your blood pressure. And you have actively brought in more oxygen into your bloodstream. That's amazing. The body responds to intentional breathing on a cellular level. It's as if when we tap into the breath, we tap into the breath giver and the body recognizes its creator. And it says, oh yes, I know the space that I'm in now. Ah, I can relax. I can relax. Not because everything's gonna be great, but because I walk through this not alone. And because I have the privilege and the opportunity when things aren't going well, to really grow my trust in the one who is worth trusting, the one who is worth trusting. Let me close this in prayer. Oh, Father, thank you for another day, another gorgeous, beautiful day. Father, I ask that you spread your loving arms around those who are hurting right now, hurting because of a physical pain or loss a financial pain or loss, a relational pain or loss. It hurts. Father, teach us to cry out to you. Teach us to really be real with you. And in so doing, have an authentic relationship with you. Father, I pray that you create in our hearts this desire to seek your word and its wisdom. The Psalms are part of the wisdom literature for a reason. There's so much wisdom there, Father. Teach us to search them, to be surprised and marvel that the human condition has changed a little in 2,000 years, actually longer. When I look at the Old Testament, which is where the Psalms is, and Father, just let us lose any, any shame that we have around being real with you around experiencing the full range of our humanity. Just teach us to bring that to you. And in so doing, that itself releases a lot. Let us marvel in your nature, even when it's not sunny in 75, even when it's raining, even when we have gray clouds, literally and figuratively, Father, teach us just to marvel at your creation. Thank you for the birds chirping tonight and singing in the background. Thank you for the insects we can hear in the grass. Thank you for the promise of a rebirth this holy week and the promise of a rebirth each spring. We ask all of this and the holy and the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ. 
the anointed one, the redeemer of the human race, whose very name means God saves. Amen and amen. Blessings to you, friends. Bye-bye.